Arceus, shaper of worlds, maker of universes, creator of all things, the Alpha Pokemon, holder than time itself, the one true god of the Pokemon world. It shaped the land that- oh wait, hang on a second, what? what? Uh, did some 12 year old just catch it in an Ultra Ball? Oh, uh, well I mean 22, but yeah. Yeah, that was me. Honestly, it wasn't even that hard. I just hit it a few times, threw a couple of balls at it. Oh, but look at those IVs. Is that, oh, oh, is that a gentle nature? And hey, you know what? I'm going to just uh, reset this to give it another go. What do you say? There are a lot of Pokemon that could be considered gods or deities of the world, but it's long been established in the lore that Arceus sits at the very top of the Pokemon pantheon. It's like the Zeus of the Pokemon world, if you will. It's called the Alpha Pokemon. It is said to have shaped the universe and is generally considered by the fandom to be the most powerful Pokemon in existence. But is that really true? If you believe that Arceus really is the god of the Pokemon world, then surely there should be none more powerful than it and none capable of defeating it. Problem is, I'm not too big on just believing things. History, legends, deities even, they can all lie to you. But math, math never lies. So today, I'm going to be using cold, hard numbers to find every single Pokemon that could defeat Arceus in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Or in other words, every Pokemon that can kill God. Richard, hit that intro. Now, the most obvious way to find out which Pokemon are strong enough to defeat Arceus in a battle is by, well, just having the battle. Arceus on one side, Bulbasaur on the other, see who's left standing at the end, and then repeat that for all 1,000 plus Pokemon. If you're a fool, running over a thousand battles would take way too much time for some silly YouTube video that I have a week to make. But remember, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Pokemon is all just math. All those epic battles you had can really be boiled down to a few simple equations, which means that all we need to do is figure out exactly how those equations work, and then we can simply simulate all the battles, and then we can kill a god in a fraction of the time. And by figure out the equations, I mean just look them up on Bulbapedia. As complex as Pokemon battles are, if we zoom all the way out, we can see that there are really just two factors at play. Speed and damage. We'll start with speed because it's simpler. If your speed is higher than your opponent's speed, you go first. Easy as that, no complex equations to weed through, no super niche mechanics to understand. A Pokemon speed is simply determined using this formula. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, this looks scary, but ignoring all the brackets and division and stuff, there are just five variables that affect a Pokemon's in-game speed stat. Base stats are something specific to a Pokemon species, they're why a Ninjask is naturally faster than a Geodude. Level is, well, it's just your level, ranging from 1 to 100. IVs are individual values, it's a random number ranging from 1 to 31 that's generated for each Pokemon when you catch them that makes Pokemon of the same species feel a bit different from each other. EVs or effort values are a bit more complicated, but basically they're gained in specific stats as you level up depending on what Pokemon you kill up to a max of 252 for some reason. Ignoring all that, to simplify, EVs get higher in time while IVs stay the same. And lastly, every Pokemon has a nature that raises one of their stats by 50% and lowers another. Plug all those values in and boom, you got your speed. The second factor at play in battles is, you guessed it because I said it earlier, damage. If we throw the damage formula up on the board, you'll see that it's super simple, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, so this one is a bit more involved, but for the sake of today's experiment, we're gonna ignore basically all of this. 
this. I don't know which side it's going to be on. I'll get to why in a second. The damage is affected by the level of the attacking Pokemon, the base power of the move they're using, the attacking stat of the attacker, and the defending stat of the target, which is determined using the same formula as speed from before. When the damage a Pokemon has received is greater than their total hit points, they lose. HP, by the way, has a slightly different formula, but is affected by all the same stuff as regular base stats. <laughs> okay, okay, that's all the scary math out of the way. Now, let's get back to killing God. So, if we know the base stats and the damage output of every Pokemon, which we can calculate, then all I need to do is write a little bit of code that compares the speed of a Pokemon with Arceus, calculates the damage of the faster Pokemon, then the slower, then the faster, and whenever a Pokemon has taken more damage than their maximum hit points, declare the other one the winner, and then repeat that for every single Pokemon in the game. Now, I studied engineering, not computer science, but there comes a point in every engineer's education when they are forced to learn at least enough code to get by. Except apparently I missed that day because when I started college, nobody I knew knew how to write any code and then all of a sudden junior year rolls around and the professors start talking about MATLAB syntax like I have any idea what the hell they're talking So instead, we're going back to Old Faithful and making maybe my most involved spreadsheet to date, which can accurately simulate all the battles we need just a little bit out of order. But in order to run a simulation like this, we first need to lay out some assumptions. Things that we are just choosing to be true for every single battle to simplify things a little bit. Ooh. All right, all right, enough talk. You wanna know how to kill Arceus? All you gotta do is look that subscribe button right in the eye and tell it, you're next. <clears throat> I'm going to assume that every single Pokemon going up against Arceus is level 100 because I mean, you're fighting God, why would you not be? They all have 31 IVs across the board and 252 EVs in both their speed and whatever their primary attacking stat is, and a nature that increases their attack or special attack. That's right, we're going full competitive mode up in here. They will use whatever move they have access to that does the most damage exclusively. No status conditions or any shenanigans like that, and no items of any kind. They're just too hard to account for. We're also assuming that there aren't any critical hits, weather effects, Z moves, anything like that, which is why we can toss all this stuff in the trash. Get out of here! So to start, I grabbed a list of every single Pokemon and all their base stats and put them into a spreadsheet. Then I added a section where it converts their base stats into their actual in-game stats using the formulas and assumptions that I just talked about. Thanks to the power of Excel, or rather Google Sheets because I wanted to be able to share it with you at the end, I just needed to type in the formula for one Pokemon at the top and then it calculates the rest for me. Ah, spreadsheets. Truly an engineer's best friend. Because it lets us be lazy. So that's all the challengers set, now for their opponent, Arceus. We only see Arceus in-game once in an official capacity, and that's in, fittingly enough, Legends Arceus. When you fight him at the end of the game, he's level 75. However, there is an unreleased event from way back in the Diamond and Pearl area where you could obtain an item called the Azure Flute, bring it to the top of Mount Coronet, play it, and battle the Alpha Pokemon itself in the Hall of Origin. Like I said, this item was never actually released, allegedly because Game Freak thought it was too complicated. Plain a, plain a flute. But, you know, they can us decipher riddles written in literal braille to get the Reggies in the previous game. Yeah, that's fine, they'll figure it out, who doesn't know braille? Anyway, despite its questionable canonicity, this is the strongest Arceus we've seen yet in game, so I'm gonna be using this as the opponent. This Arceus is level 80 with the moves Hyper Beam, Recover, Future Sight, and Refresh. Though Arceus can be any type given the correct plate, here it is in its seemingly preferred normal form. Now, ah, bah, 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 not so fast on that comment there, buddy. I can hear your complaints already. Why does our Pokemon get to be level 100 while Arceus is only level 80? That's not fair, it should be an even battle. And you know what? Your complaints are valid and they are heard, and they are wrong. Here's why. 
This video is about finding which Pokemon can kill Arceus, not which Pokemon can kill a hypothetical version of Arceus that is as strong as it could get. I could give Arceus a little boost in levels, giving it access to its signature attack, Judgment, and believe me, that would have made my job a lot easier. But the thing is, in the canon of the games, there is only one Arceus, and it ain't level 100. It's not my fault that it only gained five levels in the hundreds of years between the Legends game and the modern day. I don't know, maybe Arceus is just lazy. So with that established, we can- Hey, 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 what I say about the comment? Back up, back up, scroll back up. On me, on me. You're about to try and come in and say, <laughs> well, technically, Arceus is a lot more powerful than what we see in the game, and that yellow ring around its body is acting as a seal on its power so that it can interact with mortals or test us or whatever. The Pokedex describes its true form as it created the universe with its 1,000 arms. And to that I say, oh yeah? Prove it. Every single time we see Arceus in the game, this is what it looks like, and this is how strong it is. There are theories that this symbol is a sort of seal on its power, but can you actually prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that is the case? If you can't, then it has no place in the world of science. And no, 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 the anime is not canon, and the shape of Type Null's helmet is circumstantial at best. Now you might say, well, Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, who are connected to Arceus, they all have more powerful origin forms, so surely Arceus has one too. But actually, if you look at the stats, and you know I did, the origin forms of these Pokemon aren't actually stronger, they just have a different spread, but the total is the same. So even if Arceus did have another form that we've just never seen for some reason, by that logic, it wouldn't actually be more powerful. <laughs> the truth is, while everyone talks about Arceus as if it's the god of the Pokemon world and assumes that it must have limitless power as a result, based on the evidence that we have in the games, <laughs> I'm not so sure. And heck, I have my problems with the Pokedex and the wild, sometimes scientifically impossible claims that it makes. My cargo ain't 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit, my friend. But even it is super vague about Arceus' power. It says things like, it is described in mythology as the Pokemon that shaped the world with its 1,000 arms. According to the legends of Sinnoh, this Pokemon emerged from an egg and shaped all there is in the world. It never actually says that Arceus is a god. It says that it was believed to be a god, just like how ancient cultures in our world often believe that certain animals or spirits had mystical powers. But just because you believe this white deer is the creator of all things, <laughs> that don't make it true. So until I see that origin form Arceus that y'all keep talking about, for my money, it doesn't exist. And this is the version that I'll be using. Okay, okay, long-winded rant about the logistics of Pokemon Divinity aside, let's get back to this battle. Arceus has a base of 120 in every stat. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it has perfect IVs and a nature that boosts special attack, but it is a wild Pokemon, meaning that when you catch it, its EVs will be zero. So that's the way it stays. I don't know, better lay off those rare candies or something, my friend. Plugging those numbers in, we find that Arceus has 306 total hit points and a speed of 221, meaning that any Pokemon with a speed lower than this will go second. In the event of a tie, usually the game would flip a coin, but I'll give Arceus the benefit of the doubt and say that it will go first. <laughs> Annoyingly, Arceus' moveset is super complicated to deal with in a simulation like this with moves that can heal itself, deal damage a few turns after it attacks, and require you to recharge after you use it, but to simplify things, just like how the combatants will only spam their strongest attack, Arceus is always going to lead with a hyper beam. So finally, with all the assumptions laid out, we're ready to start this unholy simulation. Like I mentioned before, in order to simulate battles using a spreadsheet, we need to kind of look at things differently. Instead of having each Pokemon attack each other in turn like a normal battle, we instead need to look at the different ways a battle could end and work our way backwards from there. You'll catch on. 
First of all, if a Pokemon is slower than Arceus and doesn't have the defenses or health to survive a single Hyper Beam, then there's absolutely no way they can win. They're just going to show up and die before they can do anything. So I did some spreadsheet magic to make it so that any speed stat lower than or equal to 221 will be highlighted in red and anything else in green. If you're red, you're going second. If you're green, you're going first. Then I created another column that would show how much damage each Pokemon would take from a single Hyper Beam and subtracted that from whatever their maximum HP is. If the remaining HP is less than or equal to zero, it's highlighted in red. If not, it's green. Now I did run into a slight problem here. Since Hyper Beam is a normal type attack, it is resisted by all steel and rock types and has no effect on ghosts. We'll deal with that later, but for the time being, I just took all the ghosts, rocks, and steels and put them aside. Get out of here, you freaks of nature. So then I was able to know for sure that any Pokemon with a speed lower than 221 and a remaining HP less than zero hasn't got a chance. They are a definite no. We don't need to even think about them anymore. That immediately takes 139 Pokemon out of the running. See ya, chumps. Can't even kill a god. Losers. But on the flip side, we know that if a Pokemon outspeeds Arceus and deals enough damage to take it out in a single attack, well then they are a definite win. There's a slight problem here though. Finding out how much damage Arceus does to every single Pokemon was easy because we knew it was using Hyper Beam every time. So we just plug in the defenses of whatever it's attacking and you got your answer. When doing it in reverse though, we don't necessarily know which attack of a Pokemon is the strongest. So I had my assistant Richard take to the internet and find me a simple data set of the single strongest attack each Pokemon can learn that I could just plug in and figure out what do you mean they didn't have it? Who's, who's they? The internet? The all of the internet didn't have a spreadsheet of all the strongest attacks in Pokemon? <laughs> okay, okay. I think you're just lazier than Arceus. You heard me, you can't get, oh, all right, all right. No, no matter, that certainly would have made things a lot, a lot easier for me, but there's still hope. Hope you remember your algebra, kids, because we just gotta solve for X. You see what you done, Richard? Instead of finding out how much damage they could deal, what if we instead found the minimum base power of the move they would need to be able to one-shot? Let's just set the damage equal to 306, which is how much HP Arceus has, plug in all the levels and stats and everything else that we know, and then do some rearranging to get power on this side and everything else on this side. See, that wasn't so bad. It gets worse. I know that we threw all this stuff or this stuff, I'm still not sure which side it would be on. I know we threw it all out earlier, but we do need to bring some of it back in for a couple of reasons. If a Pokemon uses a move that is the same type as it, it gets a 1.5 times boost to damage. That's why we left this in for the damage calculations for Arceus. So its strongest attack would usually be one that's of the same type as it, but not always. Also, since Arceus is a normal type here, any fighting type attacks will do twice as much damage. That's a lot to keep track of, so I made three new columns. One shows the minimum base power a move would need to have to one shot if it was stab, another if it was super effective, and a third if it was just regular no bonuses. But since an attack might be either physical or special, I actually needed to make six columns, three using the attacker's physical stats and three using their special stats. Then I needed to go through every single Pokemon and see if they could learn a move that meets or exceeds any of these power thresholds. There's no two ways about it. This took freaking forever. I was able to take some shortcuts like checking all the Pokemon that could learn close combat or focus blast first, the strongest widely available fighting moves, but for the most part, there was no hope but to just grind it out. And you know what? That's just the way it goes sometimes. Nobody's fault. Well, I mean, it's Richard's fault. I'll spare you my pain, but from this, I was able to find all the Pokemon that could outspeed and one-shot and mark them as winning the battle. So that's the first half of the first turn of the battle, all set and done for. Oh boy. Let's look at all the other ways this battle could end. First of all, if a Pokemon outspeeds Arceus, but cannot take it down in one hit and cannot survive a single Hyper Beam, 
then it will lose. So cross-checking the data again, that's another 32 Pokemon that we can toss into the no pile. Sorry gang, you put up a good fight, but uh, today's just not your day. Except for you, Wubat. You really did not put up that much of a fight. It's a miracle you're still in it. Arceus' main attacking move, Hyper Beam, is actually kind of a unique one since it requires the user to recharge or basically skip its next turn after using it. With this, we know that one of a few things could happen to our remaining pool of Pokemon. If they outspeed Arceus, then they have two more attacks they can get in before Arceus potentially takes them out. They attacked on turn one, Arceus used Hyper Beam and they survived. They attack on turn two, Arceus has to recharge. They attack on turn three, Arceus fires off another Hyper Beam and it continues on. If they did not outspeed, then they only have one more turn while Arceus recharges before it outspeeds them and fires off another Hyper Beam, presumably taking them out. So we have two more cases to try and look at. If they outspeed, then they need to deal at least one third of Arceus' health in a single attack, or 102 points, since they have three chances to attack. So I just need to plug that into the damage formula that I rearranged from before, do even more algebra, and get our new power thresholds. If they do not outspeed, then they only have two opportunities to hit it before the second Hyper Beam, so they need to deal at least one half of its health, or 153 points. So I plug that in, got a new power, you get it. At this point, Arceus can attack again, and the cycle continues. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna add in one more assumption and say that at this point, Arceus would be able to recover stall them and eventually win. So, if any of the Pokemon still left in the game can outspeed Arceus and deal at least 102 points of damage in a single hit, then they win. If they do not outspeed and they can deal at least 153 damage in a single hit, then they win. Hey, everyone else loses. So all I gotta do is compare all the movesets once again, and we'll finally have our answer of which elite few Pokemon can claim the title of God Killer. Once again, it took a while, but I'm glad to say it's done. I hold here a list of all the Pokemon that we have not yet sorted that are capable of defeating Arceus in a one-on-one -on -one battle. <clears throat> it's all of them. It's all of them. Except for Swirlix, Cosmoem, Cleffa, and Ladybug. <laughs> That's right. Of all 951 Pokemon on this sheet, because remember, we still have all the ghosts, rocks, and steel types off to the side, 175 would lose after the first turn. But if you're able to survive a single Hyper Beam, <laughs> baby, you got yourself a seat on the Pantheon. And quickly looking at those rock and steel types, because they all take one half damage from Hyper Beam, they can all survive a single hit, most of them with ease. And though most of them are pretty slow, everyone but Shuckle and Bronzor are able to two-shot it with the right move. And we've already talked about the game-breaking potential of Shuckle's rollout, so I'm not so sure Arceus would be able to effectively recover stall this one. And Bronzor? Okay, well, Bronzer kind of sucks. We'll add it to the note pile. As for the ghost types, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure. Arceus can't use Hyper Beam because ghosts are immune to normal, so it would probably resort to using Future Sight instead, which doesn't actually hit until two turns after it's used, so it would seem like the ghosts all have two to three turns to take Arceus out, but if it's not forced to recharge with Hyper Beam, then it could easily recover at any time. All that's to say, it's a lot more complicated. But then again, these are ghosts we're talking about. I mean, they're already an affront to nature. And can you really kill something that's already dead? So, of the 1,192 Pokemon included on my list, since forms like Mega Evolution were counted separately, how many best the mighty god of the Pokemon world in one-on-one -on -one combat? No items allowed? 78 percent of all Pokemon in existence can kill Arceus. Four out of every five Pokemon can stroll up to the Hall of Origin and, with the proper training, kick some divine ass and a walk away. Only 15% would lose to the Alpha Pokemon, and the remaining 7% are ghosts, so, I mean, they're probably not even real to begin with. Don't believe me? Well, like any good mathematician, I'm not afraid to show my work. So in the description, you'll find a link to the spreadsheet that I use to simulate 
all these battles. You can look more into the math and how it all works, and feel free to ask me questions about my methods in the comments. By all means, give me a good peer review here. So, it seems if we strip away all the gravitas and mythology and branded cell phone cases, we see that Arceus is not a god at all, but another man behind the curtain. A fraud, posing as a creator, holding us under its thumb. Turns out killing a god really ain't all that hard, you just gotta know a little bit of math. It just goes to show that the divine power of gods and destiny pales in comparison to humanity's iron will and our insatiable desire to make real big numbers. Thank you. you think it's easy, do you? Oh, what's that expression that you have?